भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Hare Krishna thank you very much so I'd like to welcome all the uh, devotees thank you very much for joining us and we'd like to seek your good wishes and blessings so that we can share something which will help us advance to the supreme personality of god and please him with our devotion and also that he will take special care of his wonderful devotee his holiness bhakti chulu swami so um we looking at the third verse of the gita mahatmya from the padma purana so we can recite the sanskrit maline mochanam pursa jala snanam divedine shakshagitam vasisnanam samsaram alandasanam one may cleanse himself daily by taking a bath in water or if one takes a bath even once in the sake of Ganges water of Bhagavad Gita. For him, the dirt of material life is altogether vanquished. Very powerful um, slok, which glorifies the uh, Bhagavad Gita. And throughout the generations, uh, this has been the effect of Bhagavad Gita because Bhagavad Gita has this impact of transforming one's consciousness from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness. And as we can, as we saw. um on saturday how lord krishna immediately transported arjun from material consciousness being on the bodily platform straight away onto the spiritual consciousness awakening his uh, knowledge of uh, who he actually is the spirit soul so that's where we ended with the second chapter and i did say that if anybody has any specific questions on that theme of the bhagavad gita uh you're welcome to inquire at this stage otherwise uh we will carry on into the next theme of the of this chapter okay so two more themes in this chapter there's four in total first is lord uh, sorry arjun taking shelter of the supreme lord humbly submitting himself to the lord uh understanding that he isn't understanding and the second theme is as we just talked about the uh explanation by krishna how he begins the explanation to arjun about um who he actually is which is the spirit soul not the body the third theme is what we're going to discuss right now or what we're going to talk to and the fourth is um when the self realized person how does he act and how does he behave how does he walk how does he talk so these are the four themes so let's go through the third theme and i wanted to ask um uh, pitambar you can read uh, this slok there's quite a lot of uh, uh, sloks about 22 so we just going to read through that. every single slok is very important every single verse we can spend hours discussing but the idea of our seminar is a sort of an overview of the chapter with things to learn from each uh, theme of the chapter so we got to sort of breeze through the the verses uh but to give them justice really we need to study each one together with shila prabhupada's purport to really understand however we want to get an overview and we want to understand that gita is also not that difficult to read uh, and then i was going to ask kona bandar to read the second the the the, the fourth segment uh, which contains 18 verses so okay uh, pitam go for it oh maybe karuna karuna banda are you there Yes, Hare Krishna. Okay, so would you like to read this part of the Gita? Okay. <laughs> Sorry to swing it on you. She has a Gita ki je. Text thirty one. Considering your specific duty as a Kshatriya, you should know that there is no better engagement for you than fighting on righteous principles, and so there is no need for hesitation. Text thirty two. O Partha, 
Happy are the Kshatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought, opening for them the doors of the heavenly planet. Text 33. If, however, you do not perform your religious duty of fighting, then you will certainly incur sins for neglecting your duties and thus lose your reputation as a fighter. Text 34. People will always speak of your infamy. For a respectable person, dishonor is worse than, worse than death. Text 35. The great generals who have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only, and thus they will consider you insignificant. Text 36. Your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability. What could be more painful for you? Text 37. O son of, son of Kunti, either you will be killed on the battlefield and attain the heavenly planets, or you will conquer and enjoy the earthly kingdom. Therefore, get up with determination and fight. Text 38. Do thou fight for the sake of fighting without considering happiness or distress, loss or gain, victory or defeat. And by so doing, you shall never incur sin. Text 39. Thus far I have described this knowledge to you through analytical study. Now listen as I explain it in terms of working without fruity results. O son of Preta, when you act in such knowledge, you can free yourself from the bondage of works. Text 40. In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution, and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. Text 41. Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose, and their aim is one. O oh, beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute in many branched is many branched. Text 42, 43. Men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruitive activities for, the, for elevation to heavenly planets, resultant good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification and opulent life, they said that there is nothing more than this. Text 44. In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence, and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. Text 45. The Vedas deal mainly with the subject of the three modes of material nature. O Arjuna, become transcendental to these modes, these three modes, be free for, from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety, and be established in the self. Text 46. All purposes served by a small well can at once be served by a great reservoir of water. Similarly, all the purposes of the Vedas can be served to one who knows the purpose behind them. Text 47. You have a right to perform your prescribed duty, but you are not entitled to the fruits of action. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities, and never be attached to not doing your duty. Text 48. Perform your duty equipoise, O Arjuna, abandoning all attachment to success or failure. Such equanimity is called yoga. Text 49. O Dhananjay, keep all abominable activities for distant by devotional service, and in that consciousness surrender unto the law. Those who want to enjoy the fruits of their work are misers. Text 50. A man engaged in devotional service rids himself of both good and bad reactions, even in this life. Therefore, strive for yoga, which is the art of all work. Text 51. By thus engaging in devotional service to the Lord, great sages or devotees free themselves from the results of work in the material world. In this way, they become free from the cycle of birth and death and attain the state beyond all miseries by going back to God. Mm -hmm. Text 52. When your intelligence pass, has passed out of the dense forest of delusion, you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard. 
safety free, when your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas, and in which remains fixed in the trance of self-realization, then you will have attained the divine consciousness. Jay, thank you very much, uh, Karuna. You can tell you're a teacher because uh, you spoke so very, very clearly. So very, very nice. Thank you very much. So um, this part of the Gita talks about Dharma. And we can try to understand how this will impact us, our daily day-to-day -day life in, in the so-called real world that we live in, the material world, which actually is not a real world. It's just a temporary world. The real world is in the spiritual world. But basically, Krishna distinguishes between two types of duties. In the first 11 verses from text 28 to 38, he tells Arjun that as a Kshatriya, it is your duty to fight. Um, you have to uphold the law. It's your duty because you have that nature. That's your nature. And if you don't do your duty, you will be uh, scorned upon. Yeah, we will, uh, people will laugh at you. And uh, you will become disrespected. And then Krishna goes on to his eternal duty. The second part of uh, the verses that we read from... Um, 39 to 53. He talks basically about karma yoga, where you do your duty without being attached to the fruits of the duty. That's karma yoga. So you do your work without worrying about the salary. Whether it comes or it doesn't come, doesn't matter. You're just doing your duty because that is the duty of the self. It's not just connected to the body, but it's connected to the self. Now, dharma... Uh, Prabhupada uh, defines it in many ways, defines it as religion, as duty. Uh, he also explains that dharma is something that's actually intrinsic into our characteristic. It's something that we can't avoid, can't neglect, can't negate. It's, for example, dharma is actually a very, very hard word to translate into English. Essentially, it is what is completely intrinsic to us. And I'll give you an example. The quality of fire, the dharma of fire is heat. Without heat, there's no meaning to fire. Uh, the dharma of water is, it is liquid. It is, uh, quenches the thirst. Right? That's the dharma of water. You can't separate the two. So similarly, we have a dharma which is inseparable from us, is intrinsically set within us, which we cannot neglect, avoid, negate. It's there, no matter what we do. That dharma stays with us, just like heat stays with fire. And that dharma is dharma of the soul, dharma of being servant to Krishna. If we look at our lives, we are always serving somebody or other. We are either serving the family, the community, the nation, or ultimately, if there's nobody, we're serving ourselves. Or, or if we have a pet, we're serving the pet. We're always serving. That's intrinsic value, quality of the Atma. So these two types of dharmas, we have to see what they are. The soul has a swadharma. We are born with a particular body in a particular family, with a particular set of friends, within a particular society, all connected to the body. That's a, that is one type of dharma. It's a worldly duty dharma, swadharma. And then there's a second, which is the duty that belongs to the soul. And that's sanatan dharma. Sanatan means eternal. Swadharma, swa means temporary. It can change with our body and our consciousness. But sanatan dharma cannot change. That's our eternal spiritual duty. And that's connected with our relationship with the Supreme Lord and mature nature and uh, other living entities. Now, the lesson to learn from this, it's a huge one. It's a very important lesson that we can imbibe within our life. We have to learn to execute both dharmas side by side. We can't neglect one at the expense of the other. 
Most people can't. Many individuals, 99.99% of this world, probably, neglect the Sanat and Dharma because we're so preoccupied with our Swadharma, connection to the body. We don't even know where the soul is. How can we even think about Sanat and Dharma? So that's. At, this, at the same time, it's not. Sorry, let me just take that. Is that okay? Is that better? Pitamba, can you hear me? Yes, it's better. It was breaking up a bit just a minute yeah, ago. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's okay. Um, Pitamba, be ready for the, reading the next slot, huh? No, not now, uh, in a few minutes. Yes, okay, so um, the second dharma, which is Sanatan dharma, um, it's not possible to prematurely just focus on Sanatan dharma, just focus on our spirituality, because we're not quite ready. We have to combine both execute both at the same time. We're living in this world, in this material world. We have duties. We have responsibilities that go with those duties. We have to continue with those duties. So effectively, whatever body we've got, male, female, young, old, um, we have certain um, obligations to fulfill. And with those obligations, come the responsibilities that we have to act within our means. At the same time, however, we should not neglect our Sanatan Dharma. We should not neglect to find out who we are, what is our relationship with the Lord, what is our relationship with material nature, and what is our relationship with other living entities. This is all very, very important. So we, the most progressive path is to be fully alert to both duties and in doing so lead a happy and balanced material and spiritual life. Krishna was actually encouraging Arjun to fight, do his swadharma, but in the mood of not expecting any result. The fruits, you leave it to the Lord, but you do your duty. So for us, the ideal scenario is we do our duty according to our bodily commitments, according to our uh, swadharma. However, at the same time, we uh, engage in bhakti yoga. We chant our holy, we chant the holy names on beads. We do our reading. We associate with the devotees. These are all very important things. So we, we do both things at the same time. There are some devotees, some people who can give up their life completely and go to the temple. And that's what Arjun wanted to do. He wanted to leave the battlefield and go to the forest. And Krishna said to him, you will be acting against your swadharma, your, sw your nature. And I will be laughing at you. Because when you go to the Himalayas and you ask somebody for donation of food and they don't give it to you, you will pick up your Gandiva and you will fire your arrow at them. Because that is your nature, your Kshatriya. So do your duty according to your nature, but dedicate that work. Or, or don't have, at this point, Krishna is saying, don't be attached to the fruits or the results of that work. So that is the second theme of the Bhagavad, uh, of, uh, of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna's teaching to Arjun. Uh, uh, Madhusudan Prabhu, would you like to add anything to that? Um, no, uh, this you, uh, Bhagavad Gita is speaking itself, you know, and Krishna is obviously it's been locked down. that. Yeah, we don't have a duty, and luckily, this may we may try to see how this can be practical in our life. Obviously, we are not kshatriyas; we are not carrying a bow and arrow and all that, and like Arjuna, and we are not thrown on the battlefield, you know. But our everyday life is a battlefield. We have to look at it like that, and then 
carry on our our prescribed duties you know responsibilities that we have um and and you know luckily krishna hasn't thrown us on a battlefield demanding that you go and fight your relatives and all that so that was a big challenge put to arjuna i think so we we by reading this we tried to think well what is my duty what is my karma and vikarma and how can i um what are the results what sort of results should i leave that to krishna so in our everyday life at least we don't have that great big burden and and then as this kali yuga has progressed you know the this mahabharat war and arjun they were at the you know end of the other previous yuga so we are at the, you know we are at the mercy of this kali yuga but there is a greater mercy that's of lord chaitanya that we don't have to pick up bows and arrows and weapons and throw stones at each other and all that we just have to chant you know and try and understand krishna and and do our bhakti in that way so mm. we don't have that kind of pressure but then there are warriors you know i know like you mentioned i think the last the first chapter when you reading that there was one mm. soldier he was a devotee and he, he had to go to afghanistan and uh, there are so many soldiers who go on the battlefield in you know, places like kandahar and all that places and they have no knowledge of the bhagavad gita and shrimad but they still go and and fight for the country but this devotee i know he he used to read bhagavad gita and he was in in a, on a battlefield somewhere in afghanistan and he could try to relay so well, you know as a soldier this is what i've been you know my duty i still have to do my duty to fight here you know so maybe in that way you can relate with arjuna mm yes also if we look at our own lives it is a battlefield as like you first said you know people have to go to work you have to earn a living you've got bills to pay got mortgages to pay um so uh, krishna is not saying give it all up just no. yeah he's actually saying do your work but at the same time the same time look at your sanatan dharma don't just focus on the worldly aspect of your duties but try to also uh, look within so that's quite important and most people here are, are probably working or have commitments very few devotees who can actually simply give up everything and go and live in the temple and simply focus on sanatan dharma Uh, their own spiritual progress and helping others doing spiritual pro- making spiritual progress but that's not what krishna is saying as well that you don't have to do that if one's nature is to do that fantastic because that is yes, there is that temptation you see for people then when we were young even myself when i was young mm. i didn't want to take on responsibility of work and job and i wish i can go up in the mountain and sit in a cave and meditate or something like that <laughs> but that's you know this yogi is can it's it's like you know trying to be you know a cop out you know to, <laughs> and run away you know, from this kind of responsibilities but we got to take on those responsibilities and like you say if it is in you know, our nature to to go and live in a temple and serve and a lot of devotees do that but they they're in a stage where they're still studying it's not it's not yes. easy living within a temple as well yes. there are responsibilities that are chores to be done you still have to you know maintain your body and maintain the temple you extend so you, you, you there's a lot of deeper study of the scriptures when you're in the temple and and how to do the service and you're doing it under the guidance of uh, the spiritual master but luckily propad said you don't have to do anything you know you don't have to give up any of this you just add krishna to yeah. your life very good very add the sanatan principles learn the sanatan principles go their eternal principles and that is the only true religion really um others are all the word religion is very misconstrued you know dharma is better there is only one dharma 
that is Sanatana Dharma. It's like gravity. There's only gravity is one gravity. Krishna has created that. You can't say, you know, the, you can't change it or twist it or anything like that. Uh, like that, you know, principles with Sanatana Dharma are eternal. And that is the true religion. Others are all maybe man-made religions or based on some following of leader or a script to some book or textbook or something. So these are principles of Sanatana Dharma that we, Krishna is trying to imbibe in, in Arjuna and take on, you know. Are, are there any questions uh, from anybody in respect of this particular subject matter? Otherwise, we'll move on to the next. Uh, Namaste Prabhuji. Uh... Hare Krishna Prabhuji, this is Bhavani from Oking. So here, I just like, you know, we are, we are normal, like, you know, we are in a, this Varnashrama Dharma, normal people who, who are outside of Krishna conscious. So what's our Dharma in this sense? Like, you know, yeah. here, I just want to know a bit more about, you know, yes. Varnashrama Dharma, how, although you are in a material world, living like, you know, with the family, jobs and everything, how you can, how we can put ourselves into Krishna's consciousness. Very good. Yes, good question. Absolutely the most perfect question to ask. Uh, what do we, we basically, as you said, Varnashram Dharma, we're living a Grihastha life. Grihastha means yes. household exactly. life. And mm -hmm. maybe Vaish is the uh, ashram, the, uh -huh. uh, like businessman or IT. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm 90% I'm right when I say IT because most people are in IT. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. So our duty, we have, there's two. Swadharma, you have to look after the household, your householders. Yes. You can't suddenly pack up and move to the temple because you have responsibilities. You have children, you have uh, a yes. husband. Uh, or yes. Dhanbati. So you, are, you have to fulfill that part of the, uh, the Swadharma your duty connected to your body through Varnashram. So you okay. live in Maya. But at the same time, at the same time, we, uh, Krishna is encouraging us to take to the Bhakti Marg at the same time. So what we will be doing is, whilst we are doing our Swadharma, at the same time, we wake up early and we chant the holy names of the Lord. We wake up a little early and we can do arti to the Supreme Lord. We can read Bhagavad Gita at home. It's not that we are simply focusing on our swadharma, looking after the children and the husband, but we at the same time, we uh, engage in understanding who we are, who God is, what's our relation with God. Yeah, and uh, as Jainti just said, offering uh, our food to the Lord. So many different things, which we will come to later in, in this, in, not today, but as we're going through the Gita, we'll come through to how we can increase our time within Sanatana Dharma. So we establish ourselves firmly in Bhakti, whilst still living within the Varnashram system. Does that make sense, uh, Bhavani? Bhavani? Uh, y yes, Prabhuji, I understood. So you're just saying that through bhakti, through doing little with ourselves, some spiritual chores like satsangs and all that help us to be in this path. Okay, thank you. Very Prabhupada. good, very good. Yeah. And, I, and also, um, if you have children, uh, again, Prabhupada emphasizes that, you know, your first duty as a mother is to your children to bring up, them up in Krishna consciousness. So, you know, that, that is a very important aspect as well of, of your Sanatana Dharma. Very nice point. Very, sure. very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And I like your comment. Mm -hmm. Spiritual chore. <laughs> Ooh, makan chore. Yes. Who's that? Me. <laughs> Kamakshi. <laughs> oh, Kamakshi. <laughs> right. I think I might have uh, lost the thought, but anyway, uh, talking about uh, duties bound, duty bound and all that. I remember uh, when we got into Krishna consciousness, my Dharampat was in the first gear and I was on the no gear. <laughs> so, and now you're ahead. <laughs> yeah, it was quite ahead. Actually, it was in the fourth gear and I was in neutral. 
So what I'm trying to say is that uh, when when you when you listen to the uh, uh, spiritual master and uh, they guide you, so you have to do all the duties. And I was so focused that I have to do my duty, look after case, go to work, housework, this, that, the other. So I was lagging behind, but still I hung, I, I hung in, and I'm happy that I did hang in. Thank you. Very good. Nice of you to share that. <laughs> it's very what you've just said is fundamentally important yeah. hanging in there hanging in there oh. yeah <laughs> and persevering. persevering and you actually are a phenomenal you and madhusudan are phenomenal examples so thank you thank you for sharing that and thank you for being with us through this through this uh, journey you know it's so nice so yeah. nice to be with you um yeah. So Thank you. I've been uh, trying to uh, get some friends to come and join, but I don't know whether uh... you can only do your duty. <laughs> your Sanatan Dharma. <laughs> the rest is up to them. Thank yeah, you. no, no. It, it's a uh, it's important because do, while we were still carrying out our responsibilities, looking after children, going to work, and all that, we were still doing Krishna conscious activities like establishing the temple. That's right. Supporting the, the Maharajas that would come. Yeah. Because we understand that by reading Bhagavad Gita and Prabhupada, you know, has, has uh, left an amazing yeah. legacy um, and teachings. So these teachings needs to be supported at least. If you can't do full-time temple and all that, then at least support the yeah. devotees who are doing the work. So we used to have Maharajas visiting us and all that. And our, Children have grown up, and you're like your your son also is a wonderful devotee, and uh, they've all grown up. You know, like <laughs> you. Know, I remember your children were very young, and my children were very young, and they used to associate. So that's our duty that we've done that, and uh, like I so said, we haven't been thrown on a battlefield <laughs> in a real sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Carry on. Thank you. So let's do the next bit. Otherwise, we're not going to finish by. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, no, thank you. Thank you for sharing. So, Pitamba, are you ready to read? I'm ready. Yes, hurry okay. right. Text 54. Arjun said, O oh Krishna, what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is thus merged in transcendence? How does he speak? And what is his language? How does he sit? And how does he walk? Text 55. The Supreme Personality of God had said, O oh Bharth, when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification, which arise from mental concoction, and when his mind, thus purified, finds satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness. Text 56. One who is not disturbed in mind even admits the threefold miseries, or elated when there is happiness, and who is free from attachment, fear, and anger, is called a sage of steady mind. Text 57. In the material world, one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain, neither praising it nor despising it, is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. Text 58. One who is able to withdraw his senses from sense objects as the tortoise draws its limbs within the shell is firmly fixed in perfect consciousness. Text 59, though the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, the taste for sense objects remains. But ceasing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he is fixed in consciousness. Text 60, the senses are so strong and impetuous, O Arjun, that they forcibly carry away the mind even of a man of discrimination who is endeavouring to control them. Text 61. One who restrains his senses, keeping them under full control, and fixes his consciousness upon me, is known as a man of steady intelligence. Text 62. While contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them, and from such attachment, lust develops, and from lust, anger arises. Text 63. From anger, complete Delusion arises, and from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost, 
And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Text 64. But a, but a person free from all attachment and aversion, unable to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom, can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. Text 65. For one thus situated, sorry, for one thus satisfied in Krishna consciousness, the threefold miseries of material existence exist no longer. In such satisfied consciousness, one intelligence is too soon well established. Text 66. One who is not connected with the Supreme in Krishna consciousness can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind, without which there is no possibility of peace. And how can there be any happiness without peace? Text 67. As a strong wind sweeps away a boat on the water, even one of the roaming senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence. Text 68. Therefore, O mighty armed, one whose senses are restrained from their objects is certainly of steady intelligence. Text 69. What is night for the beings is the time of awakening for the self-controlled, and the time of awakening for all beings is the night for the introspective sage. Text 70. A person who is not disturbed by the incense flow of desires that enter like rivers into an ocean which is ever being filled but is always still can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Text 71. A person who has given up all desires for sense gratification, who lives free from desires, who has given up all sense of proprietorship and is devoted devoid of false ego, he alone can attain real peace. Text 72. That is the way of the spiritually and godly life, after obtaining which a man is not bewildered. If one is thus situated, even at the hour of death, one can enter into the kingdom of God. Thus ends the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Sankhya Yoga, Hare Krishna. You're on mute, Prabhu. Thank you for uh, reading uh, Pitambar Prabhu. Lovely. Bhagavad Gita Kije, second chapter Kije. So, um, <clears throat> the flow is as follows. Um, first, Krishna is explaining to Arjun that you are not the body, you are the soul. And second theme is how he should act uh, according to the soul and according to the body he has. And the third part of the theme is, if you do that properly, then this is where you'll end up. Because Arjun asks him the question, how does the perfect person sit, walk, talk? So Krishna answers, how he sits? He's restraining his senses. He's controlled. How does he walk? He engages his senses in the service of the Lord by performing his sanatana dharma. How does he talk? How does he respond in provocative situations? So this is what Krishna is explaining to Arjun, the profile of the person who does his duties perfectly. And um, such a person becomes Atmarama, he's self-realized, he's finding pleasure in the self. Atmarama, Rama means happy, and Atma is the self, happy in himself. He explains that this Atmarama is not affected by happiness or distress, gain or loss, honor or dishonor. He's simply interested in doing his duty, knowing that the rest depends on the Lord and his karma, his own karma. And this Atmarama, he transcends the dualities of this world and uh, rids himself of these qualities known as fear, attachment, anger, 
and he's completely absorbed in spiritual happiness, delight, and transcendental consciousness. So what do we learn from this? There's two verses in this uh, chapter, uh, which are in this particular section, 62 and 63. And these are very important verses. Basically, uh, these verses tell us that if we are unable to control the senses, then we will always be struggling. We will always have to deal with a great deal of grief and anguish. But Krishna also advises, how do we um, control these senses? He basically says, nip it in the bud. He doesn't say those very words, nip it in the bud. That's not a Sanskrit term. <laughs> but very interesting how he describes the, the fall down, the, spirit, the process of the spiritual fall down. This is text 62 and 63. He's explaining, by contemplating the objects of the senses, just the thinking stages, uh, so, uh, let's give an example. Um, the, my usual example, yeah, a Porsche. I, I'm not into Porsches, I'm into Micros, <laughs> old ones. But um, um, say you like cars and you're always thinking about uh, a sports car. So you're always contemplating the objects of the sense. That's an object of the sense. We want to enjoy it from object of this, of complete, uh, uh, contemplating the senses, we develop attachment to it. We start thinking, I want that sports car. I want that sports car. Unfortunately, sports cars are not ex uh, cheap nowadays, uh, very expensive. And in any way, you can't go very far because of the lockdown. So that will lead to frustration. It'll lead to lust because we can't achieve what we want and unsatisfied lust results into anger which leads to delusion when we're angry we forget even who we are we say all sorts of things we can do anything in anger which means we are deluded and from delusion comes bewilderment what did i do how come I was so stupid? Why did I lose my intelligence? And when we lose our intelligence, we again fall down into this material existence, this gross material. Existence. So this is what Krishna is explaining, that as soon as you start thinking about the senses, you are, and as soon as you start contemplating, you're gonna go down this uh, negative path. And it's not, a, it's not a, going to be a comfortable journey. So where do we, what do we do? Krishna gives a great hint. By contemplating the objects of the senses, we go into this fall down position. So we nip it in the bud. As soon as we see something and we feel some particular attachment to it, we have to nip it in the bud. Don't look at the sports car anymore. Take it out of the mind. The more you look at a sense object, the more attached one gets to it. <clears throat> so this is the lesson that uh, comes really from this part of this theme of the Gita, where Krishna is explaining about the perfect person. Avoid too much association with the sense objects. Those sense objects will, which will not do us any good. And you can think about this yourself. What am I really attached to? Is it, what do I want to get, uh, which is maybe the latest gadget? Do I need this gadget? Do I want this gadget? Uh, if I don't have it, will I, uh, will I be completely lost? We, these are the sort of things that we need to uh, look at. This is the lesson from this particular part, trying to get it at its root. Get it before it fructifies into a real desire which we can't then fulfill and that will lead to attachment, anger, uh, delusion, bewilderment, loss of memory and then fall down. Can I just Prabhuji? Yes. 
Um, I think another interesting point is the power of association. Guru Maharaj used to talk a lot about that. So if you associate with people who are um, womanizer, who are alcohol and all this kind of stuff, right. Right. you know, so you've yeah. got to be careful of the triggers. So, you know, if you associate yourself with people who are like Guru Maharaj always used to say another thing, always associate with advanced devotees, you know. So yeah. that's why I think um, with with not just your internal thought process, is what external thought process are being fired at you because it's quite amazing how um, somebody could just trigger a little thought and how it can grow into like, you know, a massive oak tree and before you know it, you know, you're, make, you're, you're back falling down into the lower species of life. Hare Krishna. That's a phenomenal point. That's a phenomenal point because uh, effectively somebody's get, uh, making you think of some some sense object that's a very very good point bad association can have a very very detrimental effect on our spiritual journey um we've it's five o'clock we can spend maybe spend a couple of more minutes um well madhusudan babu you you like to add anything to that uh hurry uh, ball yeah, no, uh, that's, you know, covered fine. But these, these are, uh, Guru Maharaj always used to emphasize these verses and particularly the characteristics of a person who is actually uh, sthita pragya. Mm. Maharaj right. always used to emphasize the word that who is a dhira purush? You know, dhira means a sober person. And the emphasis in, in this is when Krishna is describing the personality, the characteristics of a person, and Arjun asked this question, what are the qualities of a person who is actually self-realized or, or on a spiritually realized soul? So when you say here also, you know, an Atmaram, a spiritually realized soul, is, he finds pleasure in himself. But Maharaj always used to say that that is a sign of a person who is actually a sober person. And, uh, um, you know, when uh, these questions arises, you know, should we desire for anything? And then we feel guilty. But, uh, you know, you see examples of so many devotees who've, who, who've uh, like King Janak, you know, they're, they're king. They sit on a throne and they own, possess his whole kingdom. But they're not attached to it in any way. They know that they're re representing Krishna. And the, everything is actually, Krishna is the proprietor of everything. But Krishna has put them in a position to take the responsibility and, and represent Krishna as a king. So even great kings like King Janak and um, great, they were great devotees, you know, they understood their position. They understood who was the real proprietor and uh, they were never attached to it, but they just carried out their duty as they were supposed to rep you know uh, as a representative of krishna so if we do that we, we realize you know that we are also um recognizing those sort of qualities in a person who, who is a sober person a dear purush and maharaj always used to say you know develop those sort of qualities but it's hard you know hard. krishna describes that so I hope that helps anyway. No, that's good. That's a very good point. I mean, every single verse in this chapter uh, is is relevant, is important. Of course, we are skipping, we're just going to do an overview. But, uh, mm. So are there any, anybody like to ask a question on this, this particular theme of, of what we just discussed, the perfect person? I think this is uh, uh, Prabhuji Hare Krishna, Puja Hare here. Krishna yeah, this is the problem with this present world because we nobody, especially the youngsters everywhere, or they don't we don't restrain our senses. We we like what we want. Everybody is on the same level, having the peer competition that I should have this, I should have this, especially material things. I wish this was more sort of being taught or a lot of like a universal uh, religion then. There'll be so much less hassle in this world and more peace. Very well put, Mataji. And luckily, I think we got some youngsters who are 
present in this discussion. So you are absolutely right that actually, uh, unfortunately, we are, we've been brought up to enjoy the senses, especially through the media, in, uh, even our families encourage us. You know, so I remember when I was young, my uncle used to take us to some gymkhana, Oh, enjoy meat, enjoy, you know, even drink. And I was tiny then. Yeah. And, and you think, and, and I was thinking at that time, well, this, is, this can't be right, you know. <laughs> I was only little. Um, mm. But I think you're absolutely right. There's no school, like Madhu Sudhan was saying last, on Saturday, there's no school to teach you about the Atma, the soul, or how to restrain your senses. You, if you're living in this world just to enjoy your senses, that's uh, actually a dog's life. It's no better than the animals. But we are human beings. We're meant to cultivate spiritual knowledge, spiritual culture, and try to restrain our senses. And that restraining is not, it's not actually a, uh, it's, not, it's not a restriction. You're actually freeing your soul, your atma. So you actually, um, it's actually freedom as opposed to restriction. Mm. And that's what Gita and Krishna specifically says that, that this is actually your, this is a regulative freedom of, principle, regulatory principle of freedom. Not to, uh, it's not going to tie you down, Arjun. This is actually going to free you. So I hope the youngsters in this uh, uh, discussion will, will try to take, this, this value on board and uh, perhaps read the chapter uh, properly one by one verse, but verse by verse and um, really try to understand um, how can we become self-satisfied within ourselves without the need of so many external gadgets and sense objects to, to make us think we're happy. Of course, as soon as we get a sense object, as soon as we get the latest phone, Suddenly it's out of date. I want the latest, I want another, I want to upgrade again, you know. And even if we get it, it there's always something not quite right. Not, I'm not quite happy with this. It's because we are trying to become happy with something that's material as opposed to trying to look for happiness within the spiritual world. So thank you for sharing that, Nani Ben. Yeah. One last point, Prabhuji. Yes. Um, <laughs> With regards to, you know, you're saying that family members saying drink and alcohol and all that kind of stuff, eat meat. You know, I had the same thing as well. Yeah. And Guru Maharaj said something really, 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 you know, which, which core of my heart. Guru Maharaj said to me, he goes, but better when, um, when you are getting out of the material universe, a lot of people, especially family members, start saying to themselves, so think, oh, he's getting out. No, he shouldn't. We should drag him down as well. So there's a natural, in, there's a, there's, there seems to be like a, a tendency, especially with um, family members. If one's become a devotee, there's a lot of envy and um, it's kind of hidden. It's as if they know that they're going to get the fruits of their karma, but they're still happy for you to be in the same, um, in the same crap, in the same hell as what they are. You know, um, I'll leave it at that, but um, I just remembered that when you... We're just talking, Hare Krishna. Prabhupada uh, shared a uh, Christian missionary who was preaching in Yorkshire. He said uh, he went to the coal miners and he said to the coal miners, "You all going to hell." So the, the, the they asked him, "What's hell like?" Oh, hell is dark um, and you know, um, uh, you know, other things which uh, what you know you be suffering, you be cold. And the the um, the uh, people will say, "Oh, that doesn't matter. We're already in, this, in that hell." And then the preacher said, "And there will be no newspapers." And they thought, "Oh, that's real hell." <laughs> Sorry, just reminded me of that joke. Oh, pretty yes. Would you like to share some? Yeah, Prabhu, going with uh, what Prabhu just said, uh, Pratham Prabhu, um, a relative. I actually mentioned to my mom, "Oh no, Priti wants to go out of Sansar," you know, and she was like. The way she was saying it was like in a very teary, sad way. And you're like, what do you say to that? Because uh, there's nothing sad about this process. Um, 
<laughs> and it's like, and I, and I was thinking, I just hope it doesn't make like those who are close relate to me, like my mum, like it wouldn't affect her. But at the way, at the same time, it's like, it's not a negative thing and I wouldn't want anyone like like my mom to get that kind of mm. um mm. you know just uh unfortunately be what's that thing called um influenced by that kind of energy like as if it's a negative thing you know so what what could I say to my mother in that sense and anybody else who has such like weird thinking you know like it's it's like as if it's a it's a bad thing if somebody wants to go get out of the sensor, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, often people comment, you know, like I remember when, in my younger days, they say, oh, Bhaktabhanigyo, Bhaktabhanigyo. What then? What's wrong with that? You know, <laughs> what if I have become a devotee? Um, what can you say? I think to your mother, you can always explain. Uh, I mean, your mother is an extraordinarily sensible personality. We know her. Uh, so, but it's always good to explain to our family members why we are doing what we are doing, and why the samsar is not a sweet place. Um, and as as parents, actually, it's your duty to uh, take us out of this world. In the Bhagavad Gita, actually, it says you have no right to be a parent or a teacher or a guru or a devata unless you can take your dependence out of this world and into the spiritual world. That's quite a heavy duty. That's a really heavy duty. So we don't have to be so heavy on our parents, but I think it's important to stress to them that this world is so much full of distress. And you can see the distress. And why, has, why is my auntie or my uncle saying, oh, Samsar mati nikri jau you want to come out of this samsar? Yes, of course, because this samsar is such a painful place. Why would we want to stay in this place? And why would somebody want me to continue to stay in this world if I want to leave? I think um, sometimes we can sort of become a little bit emotional and say, look, mother, this is important to me. Uh, and you know, because you go to satsangs and you know what some sounds like. And next time this person says that, you should try to explain to them that, look, actually, shouldn't we all be trying to do the same? Isn't that the whole idea of all the satsangs that we attend, that they're saying to us, this world is a, miser a place of misery, full of dualities. Shouldn't our atma be freed from it? Shouldn't us, the atma, be freed from the samsa. I think that will probably resonate well and also it'll give well a good give a good message to that relative that actually hang on a minute that makes some sense. It might even propel them to perhaps think uh, twice about saying this but also think twice about their own situation in this world. What do you think? Yeah, no, definitely. This person lives quite far, but um, if I ever get into conversation, this, it is something I'm quite happy to speak with this person about. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, like mum has mentioned it before, and what you've just said, the same things I've said to her, and I said, you know what, in a way, you guys have done like, you know, I've had access to all of this stuff, and you guys are very happy for me to go to temple, so in a way, you guys have somehow, you know, led me to this thing, so yeah, it's, it's a good thing, and she does she does come around it's just that it has to whenever that conversation comes up it has to i think this kind of stuff just has to be repeated just like how Bhagavad Gita repeats a lot of things so it eventually gets into the head so yeah okay thanks for letting me know i'm like on the right path <laughs> you definitely <laughs> are or something no definitely yeah very good pretty thank you thank you for sharing that i think that's important to share because others will also have Something like that. Yeah, that's some same sort of situation. And sometimes we're a little too embarrassed, uh, thinking, oh, maybe I should hide my bhakti. Why? Well, of course, we should hide our bhakti. And we don't want to advertise ourselves. But it doesn't mean we, we want to stop our bhakti. No, thank you very much. Sorry, we've, we've really gone a uh, little too much over time. Unfortunately, I think as we're going through the chapters, and I've, I've been working on the next few chapters, 
um, there is a lot to share. And although even though we're just doing a little over, we, we just, uh, we're just, uh, we're just uh, touching a little bit scraping. on the neck, scraping the iceberg. iceberg. But there is so much and um, it is so nice as well. So I hope devotees don't mind if we go over a little bit. Um, so thank you very much, dear devotees. Uh, we shall now look at, uh, do the um, Nishinga coverage and we'd like to.